Hey guys, it's Alicia. So today I am uh, doing a little bit of a different video. I'm gonna go through a basic rundown of what hearing loss is, um, some of the history as well, and we're gonna talk about ways that teachers can help a deaf student in their classroom. Um, whether that be in the gym, high school, elementary, all of the above, we're gonna talk about it. So let's get into it. So one thing that we definitely need to get into first is there are different ranges of a person can be deaf or a person can be deaf. Um, so there's moderate hearing loss, which is not so bad. There's moderately severe, there's severe, and then there's profoundly deaf in one or both ears, which is me. I am profoundly deaf in my right ear, um, which is basically the worst. Like you cannot hear at all out of that one ear. Um, that is the basic rundown of it. Uh, there are some differences actually between your left and right ear. Um, your right ear hears more like logical and speech and your left is more like music and the creative aspect, intuition, um, emotion, things like that. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that is the basic. Um, scientists actually believe that it's because your left hemisphere is like where speech is processed um, and your right hemisphere focuses on music and the creative functions so yeah um, there's actually studies that show that one and three children who have single-sided hearing loss um, are more likely to repeat a grade because they're not getting the proper help. They're not speaking up, probably because they're nervous. Um, there are so many stereotypes around hearing loss that it makes it hard for us to want to speak up. Um, and those stereotypes need to be broken, right? Um, so yeah, that is the basic rundown of hearing loss. Um, I could go into it a lot deeper, but the science behind it is not my specialty. That is just what I know. Okay, so a little bit of history about hearing loss. Um, there isn't much reference about it in our textbooks, history, whatever you want to look at, there isn't much about hearing loss because you can't see that when a person dies. It's not visually noticed after bodies um, decompose and all of that. Uh, but what we do know is that the Egyptians in around one, um, 1550 BC, uh, the Egyptians treated deaf people kindly. They respected them. They were treated normally um, because they didn't know what to do. It wasn't something that they talked about, so they didn't know how to handle deaf people, and they just treated them kindly. Um, in 350 BC in Greece, uh, famous philosophers like Plato and Aristotle said that if a person is deaf um, and they cannot speak because of the hearing loss, they aren't as smart. They're not intelligent. They're dumb, um, which is not good, obviously. Um, and from there today, it's still the stereotypes around hearing loss are major. Um, there is still a stereotype that deaf people aren't that smart because they can't hear and they can't do talking, which was known as a way to explain reason and to um, share opinion. And um, you're not able to do that if you can't speak because you're deaf. Now, obviously, single-sided deafness, we can talk, we can communicate, but again, there's still stereotypes around that, and we don't fall into that necessarily, but we're still deaf. Um, yeah, in 1000 BC, Hebrews um, didn't give many rights to people with hearing loss, so there weren't many rights around marrying or owning land. Um, these laws did protect them, kind of, but that didn't mean that they were protected from being 
abused, like, abused with speech. Uh, so they did still face difficulties, and they weren't treated the best. They did have some help, but not a bunch. Um, and they did not have full participation in the church due to this. Uh, so, as you can see, history is kind of still stayed in place. People with hearing loss are so many stereotypes, as I keep saying, and they're stereotypes that need to be broken. Um, just earlier today, I was doing some research about hearing loss, and I found a stereotype that people with hearing loss cannot do sports, which is so beyond the truth. Um, I am in high school, and we do sports all the time in gym class, and I do participate to the best of my ability. Uh, that is just my day-to-day -day life, and every deaf person can do that. Um, it's not that they can't. Uh, it's just that because there isn't much research done and deaf people are afraid to speak up because it is, I guess, sensitive for us because it makes us different, we're not able to communicate to our fullest. Okay, now to the real main point of this video. Let's talk about the challenges in a pandemic, outside of the pandemic, and at school. So, main challenges that I personally face is, I think the main big one is, you don't have echolocation. So you can't tell where a sound is coming from, all right? Um, so if someone talks to me from, let's say, the left side of my head, I will look everywhere but there because I don't know where the sound is coming from, especially if it's from far away. Like if someone calls Alicia from like way far away and it's the, my left side, I'm not gonna catch it that, or I may catch it and I don't know where it's coming from. Um, so yeah, that is a major challenge that deaf people face. Another one is that you can't hear on your right and behind you or left, depending on what side of your head you are deaf on. Um, Obviously, with fully deaf people, this is different, but with single-sided hearing loss in particular, you just can't hear from the side that you're deaf on and behind you. So that's a no-no. In classroom, you should not talk to the deaf kid on their deaf ear, their deaf side, um, and behind them. It just, it's not going to help them. Um, another thing is, in loud environments, we are less likely to hear people. Uh, especially at like parties and stuff, I've noticed that I can't hear people around me necessarily and I get headaches extremely fast. If it's really loud and I am wearing my hearing aid, I have a headache by the end of the night or by the end of the school day. I'm not a party person. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's definitely a challenge, right? Uh, and sort of talking about the pandemic, masks cause a major struggle for deaf people. We rely on lip reading so much more than we realize. And when the masks came into play, we lost that visual cue of being able to read a person's lips and know that they are communicating with us. It's also just really muffly and that's just the obvious. Um, but yeah, you lose that main vital piece of communication for a deaf person especially. If you're talking to a deaf person and you are wearing a mask, tap them. Make sure they know you're talking to them. Otherwise, they're not going to catch it. Now, in the classroom in particular, um, I can only go off of my experience here because this is only what I know and what I face. Uh, and I know that I struggle specifically in things like group projects and group discussions. Um, group projects, mainly because you're in the classroom, you're with your group, and all around you there is more talking. So it's hard to catch what your group is saying, and in the past I have ended up being left out, um, not being able to participate as much because I cannot hear my team, and they're not able to help me in the way that I need them to help me and to make sure that I catch everything. So it's made me end up feeling very left out and not a part of the conversation. Um, and matters just become worse when you include the masks, right? Uh, you're still missing that sense of 
conversation and communication, that vital thing that is key for a deaf person. Group discussions, it is the same thing. Um, the main thing that is difficult about a group discussion is the teacher asks a question, right? Um, and then a person that is behind you answers the question. You may or may not hear what they say. And I often miss what they say. So I've had to ask, and I do ask, my teachers to repeat what the student says. It's just a basic tactic. And then we're not straining our ears or our heads to hear what they are saying. Um, that is one of the main struggles for me is group projects and group discussions because it's so hard and with the mask students naturally don't talk very loud um, mumble kind of um, and a deaf person's not going to hear what they say and then you add the mask and you add the plexiglass that is around the desk that just makes life way more complicated <laughs> um, <clears throat> so some ways to handle this for teachers in particular, this part is for teachers. Um, when you're talking, try to talk at a normal level. Don't talk too loud, but also don't mumble or whisper. Talk at a normal volume that you would talk to one-on-one -on -one conversation type thing and talk at a normal pace. Don't rush through your sentences, but also don't slow down so much that it takes you like 10 minutes to get through one sentence. Um, right in the middle of those two big differences you want to talk in. Um, also with note taking, another big thing is it's so hard to multitask in that way. Listening and focusing on what you're writing, I can't do that. And I don't know if any other deaf people can or cannot, but I know for myself that I cannot note take and listen to the conversation that the teacher is having with the class at the same time. So in order to help with that, give the deaf student their notes so they have it and they can skim through and then on their own time, they can go ahead and rewrite if they want to and allow them to focus on what you're saying and the extra detail that you're adding to the notes, um, which is so beneficial. Um, gym class. Hmm. This is where the struggles really do come into play because it's so hard to follow through with what I have said in a gym because you're running around, you're moving around, you're not necessarily in front of the teacher. Uh, for me, I don't often ask a teacher to do too much because I can't, especially in a gym. I just try to make sure I catch everything and because most students rarely pay attention anyways, I end up being like, what are we doing today? So I know and then I don't need them to repeat themselves. Um, and whistles are just a major <laughs> annoyance. So I just um, try my best to catch the whistle. Um, when we do things like Zumba, especially in high school, uh, that's very loud, yes. So I don't wear my hearing aids for that, and I just do my best to listen. Because the gym's naturally noisy, I am more likely to get a headache there than I ever am. Um, and the FM doesn't work because of the noise levels, because of how much we're moving and the just the major noise levels of the gym, the FM doesn't work. Um, uh, I'll talk about the FM in a second because that is just an extra thing to help the deaf student. But yeah, that doesn't work in the gym and there's such a good chance that that can get broken that it's such a big risk to even use it. Um, yeah, so yeah, the gym class is definitely the hardest one. And because echolocation is not a thing, it's so hard to figure out where the teacher's talking from. So yeah. <laughs> now, special devices and equipment that the deaf student may have. Um, a hearing aid is the obvious one, that or a cochlear implant. Um, hearing aid, it gives you the basic hearing. Uh, still miss things, obviously. Um, for a single-sided deaf kid, the there will be a receiver and a microphone. The microphone will be on the deaf ear and it'll transfer to the good ear so we catch what we're saying, people are saying. Um, and then the FM is a microphone that the teacher wears. Um, it can also just be connected to the classroom in general for a fully deaf kid. But for single-sided, it is a device, basically a necklace that the teacher wears. And it has an mute button and it basically is a private microphone for the deaf student. Um, 
with the pandemic, if you can, ask your teachers to wear visors, um, the clear visor, so that you can hear, or a clear mask and the F. Um, it makes a great system. Um, though the visor on its own is muffled, the FM clears that completely, so you're able to hear just fine. Um, yeah. One other thing that I want to touch on is hearing fatigue. Um, this is something I have just come recently to learn about. Hearing fatigue is when you get tired faster because your one ear is working so hard to make sure you catch everything that you end up exhausted by the end of the day. Um, with the pandemic especially, and because I am in loud environments a little more, uh, especially at gym class, or if I just come home from the mall, I end up really tired because <laughs> I'm working so hard to hear what other people are saying. Um, that you're just physically exhausted and you don't want to do anything and often I find myself very irritable and tense after and I just need to take a nap and recover and recuperate um, so yeah hearing fatigue it's a big thing um, yeah so those are the main things that you should know about a deaf person uh, this video was a little bit different it was more focused on main points and topics um, I am going to go through in the future and talk about all of these points individually. Um, you'll hear me repeat a lot of things, um, but it's important to get this message out here and advocacy for the deaf community is not that high and I want to do what I can to make sure that our voices are heard. So if you want to list your struggles in the comments, please do. Let me know. Tell me what to talk about, um, what you want to learn about, and I will do my best to do so. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Thank you for watching. And I hope this can help teachers, um, students in the classroom to know what you need, right? Mm -hmm. And the students can even take these things into consideration. It um, is good for the class to know that there is a deaf kid, yes, but they don't want to be called out for being deaf, right? You don't want people to, you don't want everyone <laughs> to know you're deaf. Um, so don't, if you're a teacher, don't call out the deaf student, please. It doesn't help them, it doesn't benefit them, um, and it won't get them anywhere. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time. Bye.